Razorbacks finish up their non-conference slate tonight as they go for their seventh in a row, taking on the UTSA Roadrunners out of Conference USA. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Bud Walton Arena. The Hogs could equal their longest win streak under Coach Anderson tonight if they beat Texas San Antonio, who is struggling. They are 4-8 and eight on the year, coached by former NBA and college star Brooks Thompson. We'll be back with the Shelter Insurance starting lineups right after this. You're watching Arkansas Razorback basketball. Hand to watch the Hogs' final non-conference game of the year. The starting lineups are brought to you by Shelter Insurance and your local Shelter Insurance agents throughout Arkansas. For your auto, home, and life, find an agent near you at shelterinsurance.com. First, for the visitors from San Antonio, I'll draw your attention to the bottom of the screen. Number 32, Jordan Sims. He's a senior from Tucson, Arizona. 11.2 points per game. And the reason I draw your attention to him, more than half of the three-pointers made on this team have come from him. He's the leading scorer in there. Keon Lewis is the leading scorer for the team, and he's out with a concussion. For the Arkansas Razorbacks here in the starting five, senior, junior rather, from Lepanto, Rashad Madden, averaging 9.7 a game. Ricky Scott at 4.7 per contest. Fred Gully getting the start as well at guard tonight at 3.8. Cody Clark at 8.2 per game, and Bobby Portis again starting at 12.3 per contest. Our tip-off is coming up next, the final non-conference game of the year. Stay with us. You're watching the Razorback Sports Network from IMG. Work, and then there's heavy-duty work, the kind that makes civilization possible. When compromise is not an option, the answer is always Ford F-Series across this country in overwhelming numbers. Get zero for 60 plus 1500 trade assist or up to 7500 in total savings on F-150. For more than 80 years, families have trusted Petty Jean Meats to provide the highest quality products money can buy. Today, we continue to use only the best cuts of meat, quality ingredients, and time-tested smoking processes to ensure that what ends up on your family table is simply delicious every time. For any occasion, you can count on Petty Jean Meats to deliver delicious hams, hickory smoked bacon, and so much more. Petty Jean Meats are available for mail order and ship nationwide. Taste the difference. Visit pjmeats.com and start your family tradition today. I go where my work takes me, and that's all over because I contract out for IT jobs. When my dad came home from being away, he brought me matchbooks. I bring my son pens, but dad could never stay connected like I can or help out like I can with our day-to-day -day finances, even deposit money right now when we need it. I love when technology works and helps close the gap between here and home. Regions Mobile Deposit lets you choose immediate funds access and gives you options when you need them. That's smart. Roller Funeral Homes of Arkansas. What does roller mean to you? I am Renata Jenkins Ballard, the third generation of the roller family. To us, roller means integrity. Our word is our promise. Roller means stability, serving Arkansans for over 130 years. Roller means security and peace of mind for you. We will always honor your loved ones. To us, Roller Funeral Homes means your family receives all our respect. Boy, Texas San Antonio obviously has issues turning the basketball over. They're going to come into Bud Walton Arena and have any chance at all tonight. They've got to protect the rock. But when that does happen, they have to keep their composure. Arkansas going to jump on them quickly, going to frustrate them, uh, going to get on them. You have to keep your composure and fight back if you're UTSA. Arkansas obviously needs that focused effort going into conference play. Want to finish strong, run through the finish line. Go right into Texas A&M and College Station with a good effort and a good game tonight. Tonight's first half tip-off sponsored by Arkansas's Petty Jean Meats. Proud to be the official ham of the Razorbacks this holiday season. Be sure to enjoy Petty Jean's mouth-watering, acre-smoked spiraled hams available at stores throughout Arkansas. It's Bobby Portis jumping center against 6'7", Edrico McGregor to get us underway for the final time in the non-conference slates. And it will be the tip controlled by the Roadrunners. Four and eight on the year, but it has been an injury-plagued year, and as Blake said, 
They need to protect the ball, and they don't. Gully with the steal gets it ahead to Kai Madden, and we're underway. Went up two for two on my keys to the game, coming into effect really quickly. Texas San Antonio's guards, big men, everybody struggles handling the basketball. If you're going to run this Eddie Sutton style of ball, you got to take care of it. Early issues for the Roadrunners. The Hogs really high in the front court, pressuring the ball. James Williams loses the handle briefly, and now this is Devin Agassi. He splits the trap. It was nearly another turnover, but a personal foul, the first against the Razorbacks. Here's the comparison on the stat chart, and you'll notice these Roadrunners don't score a lot of points. 69.4 to Arkansas's 85-plus, and the Hogs are getting 89 per game here at home. That foul was on Fred Gully. Game's first two by Agassi for UTSA. Ties the game. Madden drives up the baseline and finishes strong off the blocks. Well, we've talked about this in previous games. He's a light, wiry guy, but he plays like a big, strong guard. If you're going to get up on him, he's going to get space. He's going to bump you and get that shot off. You've got to play physical defense against Kai Matt. And a blocking foul on Madden on the other end, stopping the drive of freshman Phillip Jones. Fans wanted to travel on Jones, but it's the first foul on Kai Madden as you take another look at his second bucket. Hogs way out on that ball. A good seven feet above the perimeter. Three-pointer spins out from Williams, and the Hogs get the boards. Clark ahead to Madden. Madden finds Gully, but Gully couldn't handle it. A scrap for the ball will result in a jump ball. That gives the possession arrow to Arkansas. Head coach Brooks Thompson there of UTSA played in the 95 NBA Finals with the Orlando Magic and it was a college star at Oklahoma State played two seasons prior to that at Texas A&M and is 0-4 against the Razorbacks as a college player old Southwest Conference days when Brooks Thompson was shooting the basketball for the Aggies nice steal by Cody Clark in the backcourt and he didn't have far to go to get his first two when you talk about points off turnovers, that's a bunny. They just give it to you. Three-pointer on the other end's off. Agassi's follow try is off as well, and Arkansas has the basketball. Hawks looking to equal the longest win streak under Coach A. Now in his third season. They're going for the seventh in a row tonight at Bud Walton Arena, and they're 11th on the season. Madden takes the three and nails it. And Rashad Madden already has seven. Has he missed a three? I, I, I can't remember Kamed missing a three in, in the last six, seven, eight, nine games. Good start for the junior from Lepanto. And Arkansas's defense pressuring the ball well on the other end. Here's Williams driving on Scott. Gets some separation and gets his first two. Hogs with a long pass to Madden on the other end. The scoop shot is in. And Kai Madden's a point away from double figures. He can get it at the free throw line. When, and, and, and you have to give. I mean, Fred Gully should at least get a point off this. Great job. He gets that outlet pass, and his eyes are up the court. And that's the difference in, in a lot of what you're seeing this year. The, the, these Mike Anderson guards are catching the ball with their eyes up the court, looking for that streaker, looking for the next pass, not just looking to pound the ball into the ground. Kai Madden leaks out. Great pass by Gully. Should get a point for it. Ooh, and an excuse me, tip and try won't go, but there's Ricky Scott, and he goes to the free throw line. Well, a lot of people may be surprised that Ricky Scott is again in the starting lineup. I think Coach Anderson sending a message that, that he thinks Ricky Scott can be an important part of this spark, important part of this group that starts the game and gets them at a certain pace and in a certain rhythm. 32nd timeout for UTSA. Ricky Scott made his second start of the year last Saturday, so this is number three, and he'll be at the free throw line following this timeout. Not what Brooks Thompson was looking for early on, overmatched facing the Razorbacks anyway, but this team has really been bitten by the injury bug this year. Their leading scorer, Keon Lewis, is out with a concussion. He gets 15.3 points per game. They've had a couple other players 
knocked out of the mix as well. So much so that they've invited a couple of walk-ons on just to fill the roster so they can practice. And then on top of all of that, it took them 18 hours to get to Fayetteville yesterday. They had some flight delay issues in San Antonio. Ricky Scott finishes it off with the free throw. So they didn't even practice last night. They were hoping to practice here in Fayetteville and did not. So all they've had is a shoot around since Thursday. Backcourt pressure. And Madden slowing down Williams, but he gets into the front court. Fred Gully steps into the passing lane. And Fred Gully misses the layup on the other end. Philip Jones into the open floor. Nearly threw it out of bounds, but Williams recovers. What a good job communicating. Arkansas stopping that initial fast break. Cody Clark, you could see him pointing and talking, being the quarterback on that on that fast break defense. Arkansas recovers. And another hand in a passing lane. This time Cody Clark slapped it away. Ricky Scott out of there with it. Nice look for Portis. And Portis with his first two. Bobby Portis going for another loose ball in the backcourt. 16 and 9 for the freshman last Saturday. He's off to a good start here. A foul on the shot on the other end. Agassi will go to the free throw line. Fred Gully is going to pick up that foul, and that is his second. Hey, I want to take a just a second to tell you with conference play starting next week against AM. This is the last Razorback Sports Network telecast of the season. So what you may not know is it takes a lot of dedicated men and women to put these broadcasts together. And we thought it might be fun tonight to let you see some of the faces, read some of the names, and length of service of some of our technical crew. So you'll be seeing some of those fine folks as the broadcast goes along tonight. He gets on the board, and it's a 10-point Razorback advantage. Portis with a good no-look, but Antoine Bell can't finish. What if he had finished? That was just a beautiful prototypical break of, of, of a little soft pressure. Arkansas used to that in practice. Sex San Antonio has to do a better job cutting it off. Arkansas is going to score on that all day. Jordan Sims misses the three. Same team rebound ends up in the hands of Enrico McGregor, and he is fouled on his way to the basket and will go to the free throw line. Well, one guy's got to give that up. They've got to communicate. Mike Anderson's going to be okay with one of those hustle turnovers like that, though. First foul of the game on Cody Clark. We'll step aside. You're watching the Razorback Sports Network from IMG. Well, the Razorbacks have won 22 straights. Bud Walton that is the fourth longest streak in the country. Do you see some of that? I know that guy. Yeah, he's sitting right next to you. He's not under the basket right now, well, obviously. If, if you're annoyed by my commentating, or Scott has to sit here and deal with it in person Before every and single after. game. Bless his heart. <laughs> Bless his heart. Oh, just a couple of the faces of the five men and women who have been doing this, so many of them a long, long time. A labor of love, they would tell you. First free throw out. In and out from Enrico McGregor. A senior from Nassau, Bahamas. 5.2 points per game. Pat with a bullet into the front court. Gets it back over to Bell. And Bell hands his first three-point attempt of the night a good sign. Wood Mike Anderson talked about him. Another steal. Scott underneath. Can't get it. Clark had it tipped away. Hogs still with possession. Mad sees room to drive. The kick out. Pump fake. Bell's short runner won't go, and the rebound comes down to McGregor. Boy, both privately and in the pregame show, Mike Anderson going on and on about having to get Antoine Bell some minutes. He's played well in this last week of practice. One of those guys you have to get going if you're going to be successful in SEC play, especially on the road. Hawks with good post defense come out of there with a rebound. Another long pass, really forcing the tempo, and Ricky Scott beating everybody back will go back to the free throw line. 
When the big men of Arkansas, we, we talk about the guards doing a good job, getting their eyes up the court, making good passes, putting pressure on the defense in transition. But, but the biggest difference in Arkansas's fast break this year have been the big men. I mean, with Bobby Portis, Moses Kingsley, Cody Clark, and Alanis Harris, when they get those rebounds before they hit the ground, they're turning their hips and they're, they're turning their core down the court or to that outlet pass, and their eyes are up the court. If they don't have that first level pass, Every single one of them are capable of throwing that Oliver Miller, not laser. I mean, Oliver was one of a kind, but, but able to throw that baseball pass out to the second or even third level to get the break going. Cody Clark, great job getting it to Ricky Scott on that one. Hogs showing their depth, as you saw. They go to the bench there with Moses Kingsley, Landis Harris, and Michael Qualls. And now Kiko Hydar checking in. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Regions Bank. Keep up with your money and earn rewards with Regions Life Green e-access account. That's smart. Regions Bank, the official bank of the SEC, member FDIC. Jones forcing the issue. It's hammered in the air, and Landis Harris, who's barely into the game for a few seconds, picks up his first personal foul. As a team, the Roadrunners 71% from the free throw line. And they do tend to get there pretty frequently. Well, Brooks Thompson plays that slow down style of basketball. He wants them to pass the ball. You're going to have a lot of screens, a lot of cuts. Uh, work the clock down, kind of wear you out when that happens. A lot of times those defense foul, you're going to go to the free throw line. Arkansas with a couple cheap fouls early. I'd do a better job keeping your hands off the ball handler. But a good job putting pressure as well. One of two for the freshman Jones. And the Arkansas lead is 12. Bell triggers the long three. There's Kingsley for the rebound. A little off balance on his putback, and we couldn't get it to go. Here comes Agassi. Jones on Hydar. Good defensive pressure applied by Kingsley trying to alter the shot there, and it goes out off of Arkansas. When well, a stat that I hope someone starts keeping up with or, or shot altered. And Moses Kingsley's done such a great job blocking shots early in the season. Bobby Portis has, Cody Clark, but but people are aware of that now. So when they go in, uh, they're not going to challenge him as much, and they're altering these shots. That's just as good as a block a lot of times. Devin Agassi with a three-pointer. He's got seven. And UTSA quietly making it a single-digit game again. Harris has it knocked away in a quick foul called on Devin Agassi. It'll be his first. Senior out of Dallas, transferred to UTSA from Trinity Valley Community College. Balls thought about the three. Flips it out to Harris. Harris from the baseline. Not there. And the Hawks all of a sudden cold from the field. And you can tell Mike Anderson not happy uh, with that offensive possession. Arkansas has a chance. Get it around. Get it to the high post. It gets that zone. It's a three on one. Balls leaves it for Harris. He wasn't high enough to dunk it. And it's an Arkansas turnover. This time his jump just a bit there. I think Walls was switching and he was throwing it to himself. I mean, uh, you got to realize everybody can't go get it like he can. Calls to Hydar. Baseline, Bell, 15, got it. Five for Antoine Bell. Well, he's not only hitting shots, he's shooting them with a more confident stroke. There's no hesitation. Uh, there's no weight in his game. He's catching it and pulling the trigger confidently. And a foul on the other end as Thomas is hacked on his way to the basket. Well, and the great shooters know what they're going to do before the ball even gets to him. It's not let me catch and, and figure out what I'm going to do. He knew when he caught that he wasn't going to take the three. He felt the pressure coming uh, from his left side. Knew he's going to step in, hit that short corner jump shot. You like to see the confident stroke of Anthon Belden. I'm not seeing a whole lot of slowdown or a lot of deep shot clocks from this Roadrunner team right now. They're really trying to get it in in a hurry. 
what's amazing when teams play Arkansas because yeah. let's face it, this is the kind of basketball you want to play. I mean, right. it, you, you, nobody wants to play slow down basketball. If you do, just just go somewhere. You, it, nobody wants to play that kind of game. Even if you're on that kind of team, when you play against Arkansas, you get excited. You want to get up and down. Uh, and, and play that style of basketball. You see Texas San Antonio trying to play with Arkansas, and, and that's advantage Arkansas. Qualls out of the corner for three is off the mark, and the rebound to Sherman. And here come the Roadrunners quickly. That shot deflected away by Harris. And a foul on the rebound. They're going to get Qualls wow. for that one. We may be here a while tonight. First on Michael Qualls. Big nice block. block and yeah. Yeah. Has Lannis Harris blocked a shot with his right hand this year? <laughs> it's amazing. And you like people that use that left hand. People don't think about it, but but when you go up with your left hand, you get three or four more inches. Uh, you're not reaching across your body uh, with your dominant hand. The, the, the shooter's normally a right-handed shooter. You're going to line up directly with the basketball. Big-time shot block. Not a very big-time foul. We are already into the bonus, as you see, but the front end missed, and Arkansas still leads by 10. Kingsley, the step back out of the high post. Nobody's there to rebound. Haji Thomas brings it up the floor. Crossover on Haidar. Into the corner, and a three-pointer is buried by George Matthews. Um, check that. That was Jordan Sims. His first three-pointer of the night. And UTSA is back in it. Bell to counter. Another three. Welcome back, Antoine Bell. You just knew that was going in. He's shooting the ball confidently. He's, he's got a different hop to his step. The second he caught that, the second he shot it, we had a great angle behind him here. You knew it was going in. Bell, two of three from outside the arc early on, and the Razorbacks back out in front by 10. You're watching Arkansas Razorback basketball. Roadrunners of UTSA by 10. It's time for a Highland Dairy three-pointer update. Get a splash of fresh flavor with dairy products from Highland Dairy. Madden hit the first. The last two, though, have been from number five. Well, one guy continues the hot streak, and another one picking up where he left off at the beginning of the season. Like seeing Anton Bell getting back on track. Bell was two of his last 17 before going two of five last Saturday, and he's two of three tonight. So, obviously warming up. That ball loose for a moment, but now in the corner. Jordan Sims can't get the three. Balls is out front. Forces the issue and goes to the free throw line. And Michael Falls got that ball. 15 feet on the other side of the half court line with two guys in front of him and everyone in the yes. building. You started to hear the oh, yep. like something yep. was going to happen. It's to that point with Michael Qualls. If there's a chance, everyone on the edge of their seat. 17 dunks on the year for Michael Qualls. Three of them have earned Sports Center top 10 honors. Bell checks out of the game to Corey Williams is in. And Qualls hits them both. And, and nice of him to join us so early on in the first half. Agassi on the other end. Right through Hydar. It's a no call. And the two goes for Devon Agassi. Man, he is really wasting no time getting down the floor. Qualls. Has it knocked away a couple of times. Set out into the corner. It's Alandis Harris for three. His first points of the game. And just his sixth three-pointer of the season. Here's Matthews. Williams above the rim, clearing the miss. Tidar ahead to Michael Qualls. Alertly gets it to Alandis Harris. For another two from him. Boy, pass a little off by Kiko Hyder. Great job, Michael Falls, keeping his eyes up, not losing his his, his whereabouts right there with the cameraman under him, flying over him. Scoops it to a land. here. May have gotten fouled, goes up strong. Thomas has it taken away. Harris to Williams. The reverse won't go, but the follow will. 
Ross from out of nowhere with his 18th dunk of the year. Well, I tell you what, if if you're following a Razorback on a fast break and you see that layup doesn't go, just duck. J j just hit the floor, get out of the way, because Michael Qualls is coming for you. I mean, every single time. A timeout on and the And he floor. was kind of bored with that one. Like, that wasn't even a real dunk. He, that, that, that was just, eh, okay, all right, timeout. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by AT&T. Proud to be the nation's fastest and most reliable 4G LTE network and the official telecommunications partner of Razorback Athletics. One of the best athletes in the country in Michael Qualls. And a guy who has a nose for the rim, a nose for the basket, unlike many who have played in a Razorback uniform. Hawks trying to get a 10 count here. They're awfully close. They got it. Well, that was just a failure of Matthews to realize how close he was. I think he had the opportunity to get it across, but he checked up. And that sent him over the maximum. When Ark's on the cusp of really pushing here, if you're Mike Anderson, you want to see that your team has the ability to stretch these kind of games out. 34-17 right now, you want to see it. 44-17 quickly if you can. Well, look at Kingsley underneath in an awkward spot to try to get a shot off, but he's going to get bailed out with a foul and go to the free throw line. One great job getting position down low, calling for the basketball, great entry pass. When I, and I guess some of the shots, the way he shot the basketball, being behind the goal is not really an issue for him right now. Moses is a pretty good free throw shooter, at least so far. He's at 68%. Trying to get that up there around 70 would be pretty good for a big man. Got them both there. In Arkansas, number one, Mardrakis Wade. Mardrakis Wade checks in for his first action, and Kiko Haidar heads to the sidelines. I guess we're supposed to call him Coach Kiko these days after he coached the team in a scrimmage during practices this week. Might be a coach someday if he wanted to be, but he's probably got bigger plans. Agassi scores on the other end. Here come the Hogs the other way. Makes the move up the baseline, kicks it out to Qualls. Qualls draws a triple team, so Harris has the open three, but it's a little off. Hogs get the rebound. Into Harris, knocked out of the lane, and will go to the free throw line. Enrico McGregor picks up the foul. When one of the improved areas Mike Anderson's team this year. A lot of teams zoned Arkansas up last year because they knew it was do or die with the three-point shot. Uh, no big men inside to do anything. Now that you have serviceable big men, not only are they doing a good job uh, against that regular man-to-man, -man, but, but when the zone happens, uh, these guys are flashing to the high post. They're catching in the short corner. When they catch it, they can do anything with it. They, they're, they're triple threats. They can shoot the ball. They can pass, and they can dribble. Uh, and do it comfortably, and then that changes everything and gives Mike Anderson so many more options when teams throw the zone against Arkansas. <laughs> Two or three caroms on that missed free throw. It's lost out off of Arkansas. Fans thought UTSA lost it as Cody Clark checks into the game for Alandis Harris. and taken by Wade as he alertly quickly gets it to Ja'Cory Williams. The Hogs are really handling the ball well. Good passing, especially in transition for the Razorbacks tonight. Thomas, the hesitation up the side. Clark with the strip. Ahead to Madden. Back to Wade, and Wade's at the free throw line. I'll give UTSA credit. 
Uh, great manners for guests. When they turn the basketball over, it's directly under the basket. Arkansas able to just scoop it up and lay it in without a whole lot of effort. Very, very kind. This team averages about 16 plus turnovers per ball game. And Arkansas forcing the issue tonight. James Williams, a starter, back into the lineup. He'll replace Jordan Sims. One out of two for Mardrakis Wade. And the lead is 20. Jones needs help. Nearly another 10-second count. Ten to shoot. And Agassi does. Boy, a fearless player. Six foot in amongst the trees. The senior from Dallas is into double figures for UTSA. He's got more than half the team's points. Ja'Cory Williams is badly off the mark of the rebound to Phillip Jones. Mardrake is away calling for his pers first personal foul in the backcourt on Jones. Well, look, even as an individual defender, you don't want to get that foul that far from the basket. You've got to be careful. You have to pick your spots on that. But you're in the bonus. You're in the bonus. You can't get that foul 90 feet from the basket and put them on the free throw line. If you're going to take that chance, it, it, it has to be in a better situation. You just weren't going to get that basketball. Jones, one out of two tonight from the line. Making one of three. Portis to miss. Snappy ball movement, and Wade hits the three-pointer. Another confident stroke from a guy Arkansas needs to make those shots. Mardragas Wade stepping into one. You can see him over the last three games offensively feeling like himself, a guy that we didn't see much out to start the season. Look out off the steal. It's Bobby Portis as a Razorback rising. What a big steal, and there's a new Bobby P in Fayetteville, and this one likes playing defense, Scott. Another deflected pass. UTSA out of there with it. In the corner, though, the other end, the three won't go from Williams. Portis has to sling the ball in, and he gets it off of Phillip Jones. Hogs will maintain possession as we head to the timeout. We're back at the bud after this. You're watching the Razorback Sports Network from IMG. Tonight, showing you a few of the faces who helped bring you Razorback basketball broadcasts over the years. We appreciate all that they do. They make our job a whole lot easier. Razorbacks up big on UTSA in the final non-conference game of the season. How about this, Blake? The Hawks don't have a turnover yet. 7.23 left in the half, and on this official stat page, the Razorbacks have not turned the ball over. 11 forced turnovers, though. UTSA giving the Hogs a plus 11 turnover margin. Well, not really the cleanest game from Arkansas tonight. So to look at that stat and see zero turnovers, uh, it may not look like a clean game, but that Arkansas really playing well, taking care of the basketball. Clark out of the corner, can't get the three. Williams got up high for the miss, but he loses it out of bounds. But your Corey Williams going at the glass tonight. I mean, yeah. something he, he's kind of floated around, stayed in that 10 to 12 foot range, not really hit the glass consistently. You can tell he's pushing for that extra playing time, come conference play, and doing everything he can to get on the court. And a quick timeout, a 30-second timeout by UTSA. Gives us a chance to tell you. The signing day on the Hill is coming up, presented by First Security. It's Wednesday, February 5th at the Fayetteville Town Center. Join Coach Bielema and his staff for a personal introduction and breakdown of each signee. To purchase tickets or VIP tables, call 479-271-7411.
or go online at nwarazorbackclub.org. All proceeds go to support the Northwest Arkansas Razorback Club and the Razorback Foundation. Signing Day on the Hill, presented by First Security, is also sponsored by Fox 24, KFTA, and KNWA Razorback Nation. Final seven minutes of the half here in Fayetteville as the Hogs go for number 23 in a row at home. Conference season starts next week against Texas A&M on the road at College Station and then back here for Florida and Kentucky. The competition gets tougher, but the Razorbacks showing that they are focused tonight as Ja'Cory Williams rips off the steal and then can't get the dunk but gets it back out safely where Madden misses the short jumper. Jones on the other end draws the blocking foul. That's on Wade, number two from Mardrakis Wade. And just a few better passes, a few extra shots. Well, Arkansas would probably have 60 points right now. It's been that kind of night for Arkansas that, that you're not playing as great as you could, and you're up 44 to 21 with six minutes and 30 seconds left in the first half. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Ford. The Ford F-150 is the official truck of the Arkansas Razorbacks. Visit your Arkansas Ford dealer or log on to MidSouthFord.com. Wade comes to the sidelines and Ricky Scott checks in for him. Hardrick is likely done for the half after picking up his second foul. Jones gets them both. 21 point Razorback lead. Hogs looking to attack this zone. 1 2 2 set up by the Roadrunners, and Matt gets a good pass in. Clark a little bit sloppy getting it back out. The Razorback still with possession. Matt to a cutting Scott, and it's knocked away. Ricky Scott gets it back and nearly hands it off to Bobby Portis, and Portis has six. Pinball action there. Good job securing the basketball, getting it to Portis. And Portis finished strong. Agassi again attacking that defense, draws another foul. This guy's got 13 points tonight. And he's going to go back to the free throw line looking for more. Ja'Cory Williams gets whistled for the personal foul. And how about the six foot senior from Dallas coming in fearless against this Razorback defense? And I'll say this if he's six foot, I'm. 7-2. I mean, he, he's not 6. This is one of those, you, you go ahead and talk to the SID and, you know, talk him into giving you that 6-foot spot. He may be 5'10", five, 5'9", five, tops. Yeah, he doesn't look it, does he? Michael Qualls checks in. To Corey Williams to the sidelines. He averages 10.3 points per game. He's perfect at the line tonight so far. I mean, also, they had me listed at 6'7 one time because I jokingly said I should be because I was actually taller than Alonzo Lane, who was listed at 6'7. They took me they took me up on it and put me at 6'7, which was embarrassing because I wasn't even close. Hadn't thought about it. Muscles his way in. Now Qualls from 15 off the baseline. Michael Qualls splashes it through the net. And we got a five second call on the inbound. Quick look at Qualls' jumper. When he just comes off the bench ready. I mean, when he comes into the basketball game, he doesn't have to break that first sweat. He's ready to catch and shoot. Madden open, can't hit the three, gets his own miss though. Good follow by Kai Madden. Scott hit the underneath of the iron. Still got the miss back. And the foul goes on UTSA. It'll be whistled on Devin Agassi. And, and all Ricky Scott can do is laugh after that. I mean, there's nothing you can do. You get it. You feel like you're another foot out. You're not directly under the basket. And you go straight up with it. And when you go straight up with it, and you're directly under the rim. The only one place the ball's going to hit under the rim. And he winds up at the free throw line anyway. Jordan Sims checks in. He replaces Haji Thomas. And Ricky Scott gets them both. 
Hogs halfway to the century mark with still five plus to go in the first half here in Fayetteville. Here's Williams for three. And the Roadrunners crash the boards. Sims gets in there, gets the rebound, and gets pushed from behind. He goes to the free throw line. Well, we talked about Texas A&M next up as the conference slate starts. The Aggies are 9-4. and four. They beat Texas Pan American today. But they have had a rough start to the season. Coming into today's game, had lost four out of their last six. They've lost to SMU, to Oklahoma, to Missouri State, and on New Year's Eve, lost to North Texas at home by 20. Well, they were already struggling. They had to kick one of their best players off the team, still trying to find themselves. But let me tell you, when conference play starts, you get that first home game, you get the crowd behind you. Texas A&M will be ready to play next week. It'll be a physical game. You can count on that. They only average about 60 some odd points per game. Not a high scoring affair. Falls with the leaner. It won't go. The rebound to Phillip Jones. Arkansas, of course, well documented their struggles on the road. They haven't played a true road game yet this year. So it'll be a really big test to start the season next week. They have doubled up the Roadrunners as we close in on the final few minutes before halftime. They leave Sims alone for three. And that's all, that's, yeah. all yeah. that's all he does. That's all he does. The guy shot, I think, 110 shots this year, and almost 100 of them are threes. Yep. I like his style. I appreciate what he's doing here. But, but you got to find him. You know, that's yep. all he's going to do. Madden splits through two defenders and hangs and hits. And Rashad Madden in double figures for the eighth time this year. There he is again. This time, Qualls was on him. And he still knocked down the triple his third of the night. Quick Arkansas a, timeout. Uh, a timely timeout uh, for Mike Anderson. I can, I can promise you this. Michael Qualls was responsible for Jordan Sims. He hit two wide open threes. I don't even have to read Mike Anderson's list. Right? I mean, that's a response. That's, that's the top of the list on the scouting report. You know that Sims is going to stand over there on that chin, that, that, in that corner, that mid three. And, and, and when they drive in and you collapse, they're going to shoot that three. You can over extend your closeout on him. You can take a chance because because nine, nine and a half times out of ten, he's not going to drive by you. If he didn't have the shot, he's going to pass it off. Don't leave Jordan Sims wide open. 37 three-pointers on the year now, counting the three tonight for the senior from Tucson, Arizona. Ball sets up in the corner and a quick trigger on the three. Portis the rebound. Around the horn we go. Qualls shaking his way through the lane, but can't get the shot. Wow. On the other end, Bobby Portis trailing Agassi says wow. you're not going to get it this time. Did well, he, did he just ace that deuce? <laughs> Is that what he just did to Agassi? Wow. You know what Agassi's going to do, but he didn't do it this time. We're back after this. You're watching Arkansas Razorback basketball. Teams and faces of the people who have brought you Razorback basketball. And in that man's case, Mr. Dokes, he's been doing it for a long time. So we have a lot of the guys behind the scenes that you don't get to see as we bring you the Razorbacks over the years here on the Razorback Sports Network. Another steal. Madden the alley oop for Bobby Portis. Yeah. 54-31. Jones gets into the paint with the penetration and then 
Michael Qualls knocks it away. Went so impressed with Bobby Portis's skill set and athleticism, but, but the way he's been able to continue to mature to get more comfortable on this court to the point that, that he's a leader on this team as a true freshman. He may not be a captain, but he's one of the guys that even these upperclassmen are looking to to provide all kind of different things here on the court for this Arkansas team. Under 10 to shoot. Agassi falling away. Hogs all over the miss. Ricky Scott leading a three on two. Falls hanging. Can't hit. And the rebound wrapped up by McGregor. Pump fake three and it's an air ball. Clark throws it right back to Jordan Sims. And that's off the leg of Michael Qualls. Correction, it's off of Cody Clark. With 2.14 left and a few tempers flaring across the way briefly. Give you a Highland Dairy three pointer update. Hogs with one more than UTSA. But I think Arkansas did a good job being patient from the three point line. Had more chances. They've had the zone. They had a little matchup too from, from UTSA. Uh, made the extra pass. Hadn't taken that first three. They could have every time. Gotten better looks because that's shooting a better percentage. Sims underneath. Ricky Scott missed the assignment, but he got back in time to alter the shot. Arkansas to Harris. And Bell loses the handle. Hogs getting a little bit sloppy with their passing, and that is a Razorback turnover. Maybe the first of the night. At the last time out, the Hogs had not turned the ball over yet. In 18 minutes of action before the first turnover. Athletic move by Jones, but he missed the dunk. He'll try again. Tough shot from Phillip Jones. This UTS. A team has some athletes. They have been worn down by the Razorbacks. Defensive pressure tonight. Hydar for three. Everybody getting back to the mix tonight. Amphlon, Bell, Mardrakis, Wade, and another guy who's surprisingly been off the last few games, Kiko Hydar. Splashing one down the senior from right here in Fayetteville. A guy that, that will miss. Everybody's going to miss. Just a special individual and a guy that really's kind of glued this team together through the transition with Mike Anderson. 13 three-pointers on the year for Hydar. Kiko was out here early on today as Bell tries the three. Kingsley gets the miss. Kiko is always yeah. out here early. We record the pregame show at 5.30, an hour and a half before tip-off, and we, when I got here, it was still there. Kiko, and there is Moses Kingsley underneath. He was shoved and still able to dunk it. Oh, boy, great look of Landis Harris. Little hop step. Look at the strength. Just to wind it up, and Moses just hammers it. McGregor is third personal foul. Now Moses, who is two of two at the free throw line, tries to complete the three-point play. And does. And I don't know if you can hear it. Moses does a great job talking to the basketball whenever he shoots a free throw. Listen next time because it gets a little quiet if you can hear it. It uh, It's quite enjoyable. <laughs> Whatever it takes, right? Thomas off balance with a good shot. And he'll get the free throw out of it. I used to say some things when I shot the ball back when I played, but they usually weren't very positive. <laughs> well, that's is that why you missed? It was usually after I missed, which, after was, you which missed. was usually. Uh, well, maybe you needed to be nicer in your I, I try, speaking I tried to basketball. I, I tried everything, I promise. <laughs> Wagner into the game. Razorbacks with 60 first half points. We'll have to check that, but that's got to be a season high for a half. And they can hold for 
in essence the last shot. As you see the shot clock about less than half a second ahead of the game clock. With five it's Harris on the drive through everybody. And Harris has seven. And that's the way the half will end. Harris with a good job defensively making sure the Roadrunners didn't get a shot off. With a big man with some nimble feet kind of sliding and slithering through the lane. I don't know how he got through there from this angle, but gets the block there to end the half. It has been a high-scoring affair in the first half in Fayetteville. Arkansas 62-35 leaders over UTSA. The Sonic Halftime Show is next. You're watching Arkansas Razorback Basketball. On the Razorback Sports Network from IMG. Presented by Sonic, America's Drive-In. This is how you Sonic. Now to Courtside with Scott Inman and Blake Edmonds. And we welcome you to the Sonic Halftime Show. Presented by Sonic, America's Drive-In. Have it both ways. Original and spicy jumbo popcorn chicken. The snack size is only $1.99 at Sonic. Well, you see it. There's not much we can add to that. 62 first half points for the Razorbacks, Blake. And they are shooting at a 50% clip from the field. But a lot of those shots were pretty high percentage. Dunks and close into the basket. A lot of dunks, a lot of close to the basket. UTSA was a very hospitable guest and, and, and turning it over right under the basket a few times. Arkansas really could have 75 points at this point in the basketball game. Missed a couple easy buckets around the basket. Maybe did hit some jump shots that usually fall. Kind of sloppy every now and then, even though it didn't quite turn the basketball over. But a good half, nonetheless, for the Arkansas Razorbacks. It was good to see Kai Madden get out to a good start again. He had had that real hot streak when we first started our package of uh, six games that we do. Then he had a few turnovers in the South Alabama game, and then last Saturday, but he got back on track early. Well, he's been one of the biggest differences, if not the biggest difference for Arkansas in an individual player basis to this season. The guy that we all expected as a big-time recruit coming out of East Poinsett County uh, to play for the Razorbacks as a freshman, uh, now in his junior season, turning into the guy that we knew he could be. Has to keep this going through conference play if Arkansas doesn't make the push to the NCAA tournament. But so far, really, 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 really good for Kai Matt. Mr. Consistency, though. Bobby Portis. He had 16 and 9 in the last game, 16 points in the South Alabama game. And when you look at the way he's shooting, I just took a glance at his numbers. Four of four from the field tonight. That makes him 17 of his last 20 over two and a half games. He is really shooting well. But one of the most impressive things that we've seen out of Bobby Portis this year is he lets the game come to him. He's a true freshman. He's a McDonald's All-American. He's played really well, and a lot of times when the freshmen start playing well, the first thing they do is force it. They get the ball. They want to shoot it. They want to show up their skill set. Bobby Portis continues to let the game come to him, and every time we blink or we look up at the stats, he's right where he is every single game, and he doesn't force anything. He plays within himself, and he's going to end up being one of possibly one of the great players to play here. Moses Kingsley is the guy that Coach Anderson calls their last line of defense. There's a lot of trust with him back there altering and blocking shots. Well, he is, and I talked about it earlier in the game. I wish we would start keeping up with this, the, the shot-altered stat because Moses does at least four or five a game, and that's something that, that you don't quite pick up on with him, but it's something that Mike Anderson and that coaching staff values and, and counts on really every single game. So far an A-plus on the non-conference finale and the last tune-up before the Southeastern Conference play begins. We are at halftime as we take a look at another of the, a uh, few of the faces of the men behind, the men and women behind the scenes here working for the Razorback Sports Network who brought you games over the years and I tell you what, they love doing it. We love having them uh, part of the team and the crew that help bring you the games year in and year out. The Pepsi first half summary is up next. You're watching the Razorback Sports Network. Big lead for the Razorbacks as we welcome you back to the Sonic Halftime Show presented by Sonic, America's drive-in. Have it both ways, original and spicy jumbo popcorn chicken. The snack size is only $1.99. At Sonic, it's time for the first half summary presented by Pepsi. Proud to be the official beverage of the Razorbacks. Pepsi, live for now. Shooting percentages clearly in Arkansas's favor. Everything you see on this stat sheet is probably going to be that way. Free throws, Arkansas with just one more. And shooting at about a 67% clip from the foul line. Hogs with a slight edge on the rebounding. And the turnovers, the Hogs had made it about 14 minutes into the game, maybe even more than that, 
before they turn the ball over for the first time and just two in the first 20 minutes of play compared to UTSA's 15 and obviously dominant on the points off the turnovers because many of those have come in the backcourt off the press and a huge edge on the bench points. Continued just, huge edge. Arkansas's yeah. bench has been, and I hate to wear this word out, huge all season long, averaging almost 40 points a game off the bench. And look at the Roadrunners' leading scorers. Devin Agus, he's been the main threat. He has really been penetrating from that guard spot, getting into that Razorback defense, the teeth of it. The Hogs, though, started to really block a couple of shots late in a half and maybe shut him down. Jordan Sims shooting three triples in the first half. Rashad Madden, the only Razorback in double figures so far along the way. He had nine in the first few minutes of the game and ends up with 11 at halftime. Antoine Bell again shooting much better tonight. He has two three-pointers, eight points for the contest. Bobby Portis hasn't missed from the field. And Alandis Harris sitting with seven at the intermission. A few more pictures of the women and men who have brought you Razorback basketball over the years, and it has been their pleasure to do it. As we head towards another timeout, we'll be back with more of the, hot, the Sonic Halftime Show right after this. You're watching Arkansas Razorback basketball. Halftime lead for the Razorbacks. Tonight's halftime highlights are presented by Edward Jones. For the Edward Jones Financial Advisor nearest you, visit edwardjones.com or call 1-800-ED-JONES. A lot of highlights to choose from, Blake, and it started early, and it started with the defense. Oh, and plenty of them. I mean, we knew coming into this basketball game, UTSA would struggle uh, taking care of the ball against Arkansas. Had to be able to not turn the ball, even if they did get back and defend those quick, easy buckets from Arkansas. Quite frankly, the Roadrunners looking more like uh, yeah, to, to just, struggle, just, just struggling tonight. Now, Arkansas, you know, if, if, if you really weren't paying attention to this game, coming back and forth, you would say there's no way Arkansas has six, 62 points this half, but that's a testament to how efficient Arkansas was when we got those when we got those turnovers and able to turn them into quick buckets. Like you see here with Madragas Wade to the quick pitch. Hope to you. Corey Williamson did a great job around the rim. Michael Paul's coming in, coming in hot as usual. That is going to do it for the Sonic Halftime Show. We'll be back with the start of the second half right after this. You're watching the Razorback Sports Network from IMG. A season high 62 points in the first half for the Arkansas Razorbacks. They lead UTSA by 27 as we get set to start the second half. Now you see the most points in a half are in the first half this year. They had scored 59 in the second half, 62 the most in a 20 minute frame. Hogs have topped the century mark twice this year. 89 points per game at home. Fast paced 